Hey guys, what's up? Yes, yes, guys, I am aware, I am aware that there are a lot of RPGs nowadays that fall under the 20 or below dollar range. I am aware of that. But I chose seven. I picked seven games that I think are kind of underrated, a little bit unknown, and that I think you should know about. All right, let's begin. Alright, let's start with Riviera, the promised land on the Game Boy Advance. That's right, you're not hearing things. There are still Game Boy Advance games that are under the $20 range, but keep in mind I'm talking about only the loose cartridges. These games, complete in box, most of the RPGs complete in box nowadays go for over 50 bucks and above that, so there's just no point. And I'm aware that a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, a huge lot of people, collect Game Boy Advance games, uh, just the loose cartridges. Uh, me, for example, I have barely any in my collection. I only have two, which are the Fire Emblem games, um, but I have them both, both complete in box, but I collected those games when they were like $20 each, even complete in box. That was many years ago. Nowadays, getting an RPG, a JRPG, complete in box for the Game Boy Advance for less than 50 or less than 40 is just almost impossible. But a lot of people collect cartridges, choose the cartridge uh, when it comes to the Game Boy Advance, as long as they are in mint condition of course, or in good condition, and Riviera is just a perfect case. This is a pretty rare game, hidden gem, uh, not too many people are familiar with this game, I've covered this game a couple of times in my channel before. Riviera, turn-based RPG, really solid, really... you know, it's one of those games that have just uh, this variety of gameplay mechanics that it will take me an entire video to talk about it or you can just watch those other videos uh, hidden gems on the Game Boy Advance or the PSP and watch me cover this game uh, in a little more detailed way but to make matters short Riviera turn-based RPG part of um, made by Stink Entertainment same guys who made Yggdra Union, Knights in the Nightmare and other games and Gognir as well on the PSP and if you want to, uh, I don't know, a loose cartridge of this game it's around the 15 to 20 dollar range completing box goes for around 50 bucks I believe it's a pretty solid game, check it out for less than 20 bucks next on the list we've got Light Crusader on the Sega Genesis and as usual only the loose cartridge a lot of people collect Genesis games uh, Super Nintendo games NES game just just the cartridge most people do that including me when it comes to Genesis I obviously I like many other collector out there I prefer to have my games on box complete in box but when it comes to really retro stuff like old stuff like PS1 era and below um, it's really hard and Nintendo 64 era and below. I mean, all of those cartridge era, it's a little bit hard to find completing box games for a decent price. Most of them are a little bit expensive, 40 to $50 range. Like Crusader completing box is no exception. It goes for around 40 something dollars, I think. But the sole cartridge, the loose cartridge of this game, mint condition, you can find it for less than 20, I'm pretty sure. Go to eBay right now or to Amazon and you will find a bunch of these loose cart cartridges for less than $20. It's an action RPG, isometric, pretty original, pretty good, pretty solid. I consider this as a hidden gem and when it comes to JRPGs on the Sega Genesis, even finding loose cartridges for less than $20, bucks, it's kind of hard, especially hidden gems. But Light Crusader is there, man, for less than $20. Get it while you still can.
Next up on the list is Manakimia, the Student Alliance on the PSP. This is the most, this is the trickiest game in the list. It's kind of hard to find for less than 20. I've seen this like a couple of times in local retail stores, well not retail stores, I mean local resellers selling this game for less than 20 bucks, completing box, and I mean it. This is a port from the original game on the PS2. It's not a new game, it's not a new Manakimia or Manakimia 3 or whatever, no. It's a port, the same game as the first one on the PlayStation 2, but the PlayStation 2 version goes for like $30 and above that. Manakimia on the PSP, however, the port goes for less than 20. Turn-based RPGs, you know, uh, these aren't part of the Atelier series, no. They were developed by the same people, yes, but they're not. They also include a lot of alchemy and stuff, and they play somewhat similar with battle systems in turns, but they're not part of, of the uh, Atelier franchise, they're more like spin-offs. They have nothing to do, they're both like high school simulators and stuff, and they're pretty good, great RPGs. Both of them, also the second one on the PS2, also released on the PSP, but unfortunately the PSP port never came out of Japan. First one did, and it's a $20 game and below. Next up we've got Lapuzel Tactics. Wow, I've rarely covered this game before, I think I've talked about this like once or twice in my entire YouTube career. Lapuzel Tactics is um, sort of like a Disgaea clone. Plays very similar, but it was developed by the same people, but it's different. At the same time, it doesn't have anything to do with the Disgaea series. And this game is a strategy RPG, as you can see. It's a comedy, it's not to be taken seriously. And a completely box version of this game goes for less than 20. Every single time I have seen this game for sale, even in Mexico, I've seen it for less than 20 US dollars. And I mean it. I don't know where you're from, but if you're from North America, and if you find this game for more than 20, don't pay it. It's a less than $20 game, probably a $15 game, but let's just call it a 15 to 20 bucks game. Is it worth it? Yes it is! Lapo Cell Tactics, pretty solid RPG, strategy RPG, a la Disgaea. Next is Wild Arms 3. Man, I couldn't leave this game out of the list, it just had to be here. I wish I could have put this game in the, in the previous video, $15 and below, because it used to be a $15 game or less. It was a $10 grand game for Christ's sake. But it went up in price because people are starting to finally appreciate this series. It's not an underrated series anymore, it's pretty popular nowadays. People are getting more often into this series and I'm so glad because it's a great series. Wild Arms 3 on the PS2 might go up in price soon. Right now you can still find it for between $15 and $20, maybe less if you're lucky, completing box of course, but I don't know, a few months, maybe one year, maybe next year this game will be more. Fortunately, uh, if you're not a collector and you only want to play this game, you can buy it on the PS4 as a digital copy, and it's often on sale, I mean, I've, I've often seen that game for like 15 bucks on sale. And even if it's not on sale, it's like a $20, $25 game. So it looks beautiful on the PS4. And I suggest you check it out on the PS4 if you're not, not a collector. But if you're a collector like me and you want to own the physical version, well, it's only the PS2 version for you, my friend. But I can guarantee it's a $20 game and below that. Don't pay more of that for this game. As of the making of this video, I mean, maybe you will see this video, you watch it one year from now and it's gonna be a $50 game? Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. Wow, next we got Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2. These are technically the same game, it's like a game cut in half in two parts, it was just too damn big to fit into one part, so the developers made it into two parts, kind of like what they did with the Hack U series or the Dot Hack series. But anyway, yeah, the second one is a direct, like very direct sequel of the first one. Turn-based RPGs, a little bit controversial because there's 
There was this um, topic of cannibalism in the game. I don't want to get into that because it's kind of like spoilers. It's one of the most violent JRPGs I've ever played in my life, both of them. And fortunately, if you want to collect them and if you're into the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, these are $20 games and below. These games are always on sale, like every time I see them, even in Mexico, everywhere, these are on a $20 range and below that. $15 to $20 range, always. Mint condition, perfect condition, complete in box, that's right. There's also a deluxe box of the first game, and that one goes over for like 30 bucks, I believe, $25 to $30. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, uh, you can get that one instead. But if you just want the games, if you have 40 bucks, you can get both of them. I guarantee that. Amazon, eBay, pretty much everywhere. These games have always been cheap for some reason, and they're pretty damn good. They're totally worth it. And in my opinion, these are the best games, along with Wild Arms 3, of the entire list. Last but not least, Atelier or Atelier Rorona, Atelier Totori, and Atelier Meruru. Pretty sure I pronounced them correctly, even the Atelier part, because, you know, Atelier, that's the way it's pronounced in France, I believe. It's the correct pronunciation of the word, but I heard the characters themselves refer to Atelier as Atelier, right? Just play the games if you want to. And I bet your ass you're going to play these games because each one of them are on the $20 range and below. I often, I mean, I often see these games complete in box for less than $20. They're like $15, like $17 each one of them. And they're great games. I mean, these are sort of like guilty pleasures of mine, you know. Um, they're... Well, I don't want to say they're girly RPGs, but they are in a way. They're kind of girly, cute, sparkling, colorful. Yeah. But they have very addicting gameplay mechanics. They're totally recommended. I mean, I strongly recommend these games. They're very addicting to play. Uh, story and characters are kind of silly, not to be taken seriously. You don't play these games for that. You just play them for the alchemy mechanics, you know, to the mixing stuff and quest-driven stuff and all that jazz. They're pretty good. Battle systems are solid. And they're great. Now, uh, the trickiest of them all is Totori. I've been having a hard time finding that game for a little bit less than $20. I'm pretty sure it's out there. I'm pretty sure with luck. Me, and maybe you too, will find that game for less than $20 or $20. But Rorona and Meruru are less than $20. I see those two very, very often. So that's it for this video guys, uh, just a couple of honorable mentions, also for the Game Boy Advance, both Golden Sun 1 and 2 and Breath of Fire 1 and 2 for the Game Boy Advance, loose cartridges are also on the $20 range and below, so all that is left for me is to wish you luck on finding them, I know you will. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!